I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And today I'm really pleased to introduce to you Amber Critchlow. I knew that. Amber Critchlow, and you've come down from northern Utah, yeah. and appreciate you coming and sharing your story. It's so fascinating. <laughs> Where were you born? I was actually born in Roosevelt, Utah. Were you? Yeah. And did you raise there? Or did I was there know? until I was about 14. Oh, were you? And then we moved into the Ogden Valley. Oh, okay. And were so. your parents uh, members of the church? Oh, yeah. 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 Born in the covenant, as they say. And yep. They'd been married in the temple. They all. were. Okay, yep. and then Ogden Valley, you kind of did your more growing up time, I guess. Yeah, and, high school and yeah, mostly just high school. Yeah. You get baptized at age eight? I did. Did you? Yep. And your dad baptized you? My dad you? baptized me yeah. and out in Roosevelt, and then most of my, you know, young women years were there <laughs> in Huntsville, and yeah, had had a great time with that. Did seminary yeah. all through high school and everything. Did you graduate so. from seminary? I did. Oh, did you? Yep. And, uh, gosh, uh, anything you learned that was strange or anything at the, during your growing up days? No, I don't remember really having any big <laughs> issues, you know. Yeah. Polygamy is always kind of out there as a bothersome thing, but... You'd heard about that, I guess. Yes, huh? it was in the past. And yeah. So. So we weren't practicing it anymore, huh? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> so how many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, there's six of us all together. Oh, okay, where do you fit in? Number two. Oh, yep. so second oldest. Yep. Huh? Okay. So I have one older sister and then three younger brothers and a younger sister. Well, that sounds like a great Mormon family. and <laughs> Yeah. And just uh, all active in the church and... You know, that's kind of, it's up. half and half, well, well, <laughs> it was half and half. <laughs> even even growing up? I mean, um, early on, I mean. Yeah. Oh, they, okay. Mostly all of them were active until they got to be teenagers. A little older. Yeah. That is kind of a tough time sometimes. Kids uh, Yeah. get, get different activities and other things going. Yeah. yeah. Life changes. Yeah. So. so you go to high school in Huntsville, you're saying. When you well, say Ogden went... Valley, are you saying Ogden then? Or is that like well, Huntsville, Eden and all that? Huntsville, Eden and Liberty, they're all right. in the Ogden Valley. Oh, is that there. what you call it? Up? So. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so uh, there's no high school up there. Oh. So I have to go down to Ogden High, to Ogden, oh, okay. to high school. So, so, so I went to there. bus down to Weber High. Where okay. My husband was at Weber High, so. Was oh, that where you met? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> were you there so, at the same time, pretty much? Yeah, we were. Oh, were you? Yeah. But you didn't, didn't you know each other? I didn't know him. No, it was oh, a huge school. Oh, okay. So, didn't know All him. Right. So you get going through high school, and what else happens? Oh, high school. I I went to Utah State for a little college, and then back home. Yeah. And. In that in between back home, I met Jason. And so where did you meet then? Um, actually, <laughs> I worked in a small convenience store there in Huntsville. Yeah. And my boss was like, "You have to go out with this guy." And I was like, oh, and "Okay." That, and that was Jason. And that was it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you finally relinquished. Did Did Jason actually ask, ask you out on a date then? He did. He did. Yeah. It was a total blind date, and it was. Perfect. It was fun. Yeah. Now I know growing up LDS, you probably assumed you wanted to get married in the temple and and marry uh, somebody that was in the church and all. So, yeah. Yeah. So we did. We got married in the Logan Temple. Okay. Um, almost twenty-two years ago. So. <laughs> wow! Congratulations. <laughs> A while ago. Yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, mom and dad were happy about that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, they were, they were yeah. very happy about that. I was the first one to get married oh. out of all six of us. Oh, okay. So. What did you think of the temple the first time you went through? Oh, God. It was different. Um, it, it was definitely uncomfortable for a little bit there. Was it? But I was like, okay, I'll get used to it, I guess. Isn't that funny how we think that? <laughs> yeah. When we just say, well, it's, it's weird. And did you feel the spirit there? or? You know, I don't remember too much about that first experience. Um, of course, you were in the process of getting married. I mean, you take out your endowments. Did you do that the same day? Or? We we went through a week before we got married. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty typical. It was little... take out your own endowments and then yeah, and then you get married in the yeah. temple. Did you go back to the temple much after that? Oh yeah. Oh good. Yeah, we well, went well, frequently good, but... <laughs> through through all you know twenty years. We really? went. Okay. So, yeah. A lot of. A lot of time yeah. spent. So you're active in the church then, you yeah. and Jason? And yes, we both were. And you have children then? And yeah, we have four kids. Oh, okay. So our oldest is um, a return missionary. Okay. And she's still very, very active. Very active. And, and we have three others that are just kind of <laughs> deciding what they want to well, do. Deciding. Yeah. Well, because it's, it, it, it's tough, isn't it? And, uh, and you actually then kind of just be stay active for for all this time I mean you hold callings and oh yeah kind of things lots of do? young women's I was in the really Society presidency for a while lots yeah. of primary you know yeah. nursery okay. <laughs> I think I did almost everything <laughs> let me ask you kind of backing up a little did you have a testimony of the church do you think I thought I did yeah because I mean, you had you believed the Book of Mormon was true, yep. and Joseph Smith was a prophet. Oh, absolutely! The church I, was the only true church, and yeah, totally. President Monson or Hinckley or whoever was. Yeah, Monson <laughs> is the most current one. So yeah, we I believed all of it, and I followed all of it. So it was quite the. And because I think some people, when they do come out, I mean, people say, "Well, you never really had a testimony." What would you say to that? That's not true. Yeah. Absolutely not true. Okay. Right. I absolutely had a testimony of the church. I knew it was true. Yeah. Um, I did all these things to show that I knew it was true, and I was going to do what I was supposed to do. Just keep doing yeah. those two. <laughs> um, it, what did you think about Jesus at this point? What was your relationship with him? I... You know, he was there, definitely, definitely there. From the name of the church, and we pray in his name. And, yeah, and you know. and you know, even as a, as a small girl, I was comforted by the comforter. You know, as little, but um, I always believed that Jesus was part of the church. And the older you get, the more you're like, I don't see him so much. You in really the church. noticed that, did yeah. you? You know, those last few years I was teaching my primary kids and there wasn't a whole lot of Jesus in the primary lesson that I was teaching that last year, so. Wow, so you really noticed that. See, I never did. I just, I mean, I had that testimony of the church and all that and I just figured that was, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I knew he was my elder brother. And, yeah. And I knew that he had to work to progress to become. Yeah. What he did and the Bible. What did you think of the Bible? That's, uh, yeah, I I am guilty of putting the Bible in second place. You know, it, <laughs> to the Book of to Mormon. the Book of Mormon. Sure. You know, um, when I would read with the kids, we were reading the Book of Mormon. We had little board books that told the Book of Mormon stories and you know <laughs> all these little things that entertain them during sacrament. But yeah. most of them were Book of Mormon. Except for the occasional, you know, there's the, the nativity and then the Easter sure. story. Yeah. You know, we had those. Yeah. But <laughs> what an eye opener. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens in life here after so many years of good activity in the church? <laughs> and again, you have a testimony. You've gone through the temple. You're probably a visiting teacher. And, yeah. And you were doing your callings. And, yeah paying your tithing and doing those things that 
we do as good active Mormons. Yeah. What happens? A big shift in life. <laughs> a big change in life. Yeah. Um, so my husband found some stuff, and he he was pretty disillusioned. I'll let him go into that. He'll, but, tell, he'll tell his um, story. <clears throat> so we went through that for, for like a year, and I was not budging. I was not leaving the church. I was not going to. Were you pretty upset at him? <sighs> not upset, really, at him. I just, I knew he was missing something. Like, okay, you're finding out all of this, but something's missing. Was he pushing it on you, did you feel? No, no. Just trying to share? Yeah, he was just like, did you know this? And I was like, you've got that wrong. Somehow oh. you've got that wrong. You've missed something. Yeah. yeah. No, he wasn't missing anything. He had it <laughs> right. Yeah, so one day, one evening, we went to um, a local little church. And listen to a, a Christian church. A Christian church. Okay. So now, why did, non- did you do that? Because Jason. Jason wanted to go okay. listen to this gal. She had her story of coming out of Mormonism. Oh, okay. And so I was like, okay, I can support you. I go to church. I can support you and and go do this. Um, and at the time, I was, I was still there. I was still in. I mean, I had garments on. That I was still in. Oh boy. So. Went and listened to her, and she said something. She said a couple statements that I was like, what? What did you say? And then I went home and looked at it, and what, I thought what did about she it. Say? So the one that really got me was she said something along the lines of, so in the temple ceremony, in one of the sessions, you know, Lucifer tells you to do things. Or he, he says, oh, yeah. quick, cover yourself. Yeah. So the Lord won't see your sins. Cover yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like he is covered. Cover your naked. Cover your naked. Yeah. And we listen. We do it. We listen to Satan. <laughs> yes. We that's, listen to Satan. That's true. We put on the figures. More than once. Yeah. And there's not a whole lot of instruction from Jesus Christ, of any like direct instruction from Christ or from God. Mm. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And um, I'd been to the temple recently. So I was thinking about this, and I was like, that's right. So she said that, So she said, we are listening to Lucifer, and I was like, maybe. So then I went home, and um, the timing was really good. Um, I read Carmen Naylor's book, uh, A Mormon's Unexpected unexpected Journey. journey. Yeah. Yeah. And that woman just really lays it out there so well, so well. It was instrumental in me figuring out what I thought and what I needed to learn. So I read her book. You related I read to the, what she was saying, yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah, and I read the Bible, and I was like, oh. And I'd call Jason. I, I'd, I'd read in the morning for all the kids that would get up. And I'd call him at work, and I'd like, did you read that? <laughs> it says right here. Anyway, lots of things were kind of an eye-opener at that point. Well, did you share, uh, you must have shared this with Jason at the beginning when you, oh, yeah. know, when you heard this young lady speak? Well, yeah, he was with me, and I was like, oh, okay. You know, we were there together, and we went home that night, and driving home, I was like, that is, that is <laughs> troubling to me, yeah. because she's right. Yeah. So. And if you don't live up to every covenant that you make and in the that, temple... That was the last one where right there it says, do you covenant your everything, you know, to this church? And I thought... Not to Jesus. Exactly, not to to Jesus, but to a church. That really struck me too when I started thinking about that, that we consecrate everything to the church. Yep. Yeah, it's all about the church. In fact, when when you're baptized as an eight-year-old, you're being baptized, you don't... We don't say to our young eight-year-olds, hey, you're going to be baptized to Jesus. It's no. You're going to be baptized, become a member of the church. Yeah, you're going to be Same a member of the church. Same thing with converts and stuff. Yeah. So I guess Jason was happy to He was you. very happy, and it's been great to be on this Christian path together, you know. Okay, so what happens, say, the first time you... Now, this, you went to a, a talk, so it really wasn't a church yeah, service. Yeah, it wasn't a service. Did you it go was... to a church service later? Yeah. And yeah, what did you think about that? We went to several different little churches, yeah. um, all up and down. 
you know, the loss of front. Lived, yeah. <laughs> trying to find something yeah, that felt that you feel comfortable. Felt comfortable in. And you found a little home now, haven't you? Or we have found a home. Yeah. Yes, and we love it. Um, yeah. What's different about the Christian service that you've noticed? <laughs> it's Christ-centered. It's all Christ-centered. That's everything is from the Bible. Yeah. It's about the life of Christ. It's about how to make that story apply to your own life. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. yeah. Isn't that a glorious it's message? It's great. Yeah. I love it. It's not about men and what what men, who men are and what they do and what they've done, but... Right. Or just or what this man do. had to say about this, yeah. stuff, you know? It's, it's all about biblical. Jesus. And the music. Yeah, that... I like it now. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't shocking at first. It was definitely different, you and know. Guitars and drums and stuff. Guitars and drums and loud. Yeah. You know, very loud, which is great. But now it's it's, it's now just I like special. It. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It didn't take me long to like it. But. Yeah. So, uh, gosh, there's a couple of questions, but uh, <laughs> your the Bible now. Uh, how does that ring for you? What do you think so of the Bible? So much different. So, so much different. Yeah. You know, I love it. I read every day, and I want to. Yeah. Um, before it was like, oh, look, I have this little list, and I can check off what I've read every day. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All that's out the dark, you know? Yeah. It's, I want to know what's in there. And it's Jesus telling me how to live my life now. Yeah. You know, it's all about Christ. Did you understand grace at all as a Mormon? Grace and works? I, mean, I don't really think you so. Feel, did you ever feel guilty that you weren't doing enough or question whether you're going to make it or not as a Mormon? You know, I'm, I always knew I wasn't doing enough. Oh, you did? You just knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I wasn't doing enough. I mean, there you're were, doing there were, a lot, but you're not doing enough. Oh, there would be months go by without visiting, teaching, getting done, you oh. know, when there would or be. Or make a phone call instead of a visit. phone calls and, yeah. you know. Um, so I always felt guilty about that. Yeah. I didn't get it done again, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, sorry. Family home evenings or... Yeah. Yeah, those, you know, when you, you start have, out so well and then try to... <laughs> when you have four little kids, you yeah, know, family to, home evening can be more of a circus than anything yeah, else. Yeah, for sure. So. Jesus, I guess he's taken on a little different perspective for you Yes. Now. Yeah. You know, it's so... Who was he as a Mormon to you? Um, an older brother. Yeah, just, he was not just first never, born. Yeah, just the first just, born in heaven. And, just the first and the best, you know. Yeah. Um. Never given enough credit in the Mormon Church for who he actually really he is God, and that yeah. is amazing. So. And and the, even in the temple, you know, we talked about the temple a little bit, but. It, it, I hate to say it quite this way, but that's the way I, I sensed it, even as a good Mormon. I just felt like he was kind of an errand boy, uh, Jesus. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he was this. like, okay, well, Heavenly Father tells him what to do, and he goes and does it. And does it. I mean, it's like he's not thinking on his own. And then no. he comes back and says, okay, I did, the, I did what you asked. And well, and that's what I mean. You don't hear any direction or instruction or no. anything straight yeah. from Jesus Christ, we're God. And, and John 1, 1. Yeah, right. Is that a little different? That's now, a little but, different. I never understood with, that. No. I never did understand that one. That but Jesus now I do. Was God. And, and then verse 14 says he was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It's right it there. Is. Yeah. I said it always. So again, back to grace. What, did, what do you think now? What does grace mean to you? Oh, <laughs> It's hard to say. I don't. Grace is an amazing gift. It's a gift, right? Isn't it amazing? Yeah. And it brings me so much peace and comfort yeah. to know that I don't have to keep being good enough every single day. I'm a sinner. I know that. And he, he paid for that for me. He, he paid for all the sins. For me. And he, <laughs> it's such a simple message, and yet it's so beautiful. Right? To me, it seems so godlike, that simple yeah. message of what he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. We could never do enough yeah. to, uh, to earn our way to heaven. And yet Just, he paid for those sins and 
Now, so we can eat, drink, and be merry, right? Right. <laughs> That's not the way it is, is it? Not quite. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now, you know, faith without works is, is dead, they say, in sure. Mormonism, right? Yeah. Yeah, it says that in the Bible, but it's different. You do it because you want to, yeah. you see a need, You're and you grateful. do it. And You're I'm grateful. so grateful for what we have. Yeah. You know, yes, our circumstances can always change, but I will always be grateful for what I have because I've been given so much. Yeah. So. And this free gift that he's, he's generously given to us that we didn't understand before. Yeah. The, the beauty of it is probably in the simplicity of it. Have your prayers changed at all? Absolutely. In what way? <laughs> um, they are certainly more personal, I guess. More grateful. More. Less ro less Robotic. Ro robotic. <laughs> less repetitive. Repetitive. You know. So. Well, I feel like I'm talking to, to a friend now. I'm talking to God. Yeah. Before, again, I guess we're getting back to the fact that I'm actually earning my way. I don't really need God or Jesus. I mean, yeah, you do kind of, but you're really doing your own thing. I felt like I was going through the temple and I was doing all the things I needed to do to get to heaven. Yeah. Not giving Jesus much credit at all not for what really, he no. did nope. and not really understanding. I notice you're wearing a cross. Yeah, That's taken you. on a little significance different, total right? Total significance. As Mormons? Well, you don't ever look at You don't have crosses as Mormons. You no. don't see the sacrifice in the cross. The sacrifice is in, in the Garden of Gethsemane for the yeah. most part. And yeah. the cross is just, we don't want to dwell on the... Horror. And yet he told Paul or Peter, he says, "Don't you know that I still must do this?" As he's leaving the garden, he still had saying, to finish. He still it. had to finish. Yeah. And then that's where he says it's finished. Yeah. So now we have crosses in our house, yeah. and I wear mine. And, and it says that those that are perishing will not respect the cross. Or I know yeah. I don't have that right, but uh, along just those that lines, the, yeah, yes, that the cross Absolutely. is really not that's important where it's to those that are perishing. <laughs> yep. It's where it's at. Yeah. So it's great. I love it. Oh. Well, so I know this has been tough on family. A yes. Bit. Yes. Mom and dad, or how was um, your folks? My parents were very unhappy, to say the least. I yeah. guess. Um, we don't talk about it at all. Just kind of. Mm, just nope. not not discuss it. <laughs> it is not discussed at all. My mom said a couple things, you know, of how upset she is that we've done this. Yeah. And I wish she could see how different it is to what would, believe what that Christ... What would you want them to know? I'm sorry. But what yeah. would you want them to know? That Jesus Christ paid for everything. They paid for her sins. She does not need to keep trying yeah. to be this perfect person. Which we, we can't. never can be. We, we never can be. Right. Um, so I, I wish they would understand that. Uh, I know it's kind of a harder thing to swallow, but I, I've always sensed that since I've come to know Jesus in a different mm -hmm. way and that he's everything, religion has kind of taken a, a different perspective for me. Religion, I mean, in the sense of men being in between me and God. Yes. Did you... Did you sense that before as a Mormon that you... You know, I didn't ever think about it before. Didn't you really? The, the bishop was there and our state president was there and... That was just the, the steps just the to way get it to... Was. That was just the way it was to get to, you know, forgiveness or whatever you needed. Yeah. Um, you had to, to go through them. And now there is nobody in the way. It yeah. is me and it is Christ and that is it. And, and there's awesome. a freedom there, right? Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> And my yoke is easy, and my I understand is that easy. now. Yeah, yeah. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, you know, that scripture. I, your my yoke is light, and I yeah. was like, no, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of things well, involved. I'm not enjoying with that. this much. Yeah. But now yeah. it's totally different. Well, we've got just a couple of minutes left, Amber. What? Uh, I know you've got some family that you'd like to say something to, and. <laughs> 
What would you um, want to say to them? I, I don't know. Just, just to read the New Testament. Yeah. Just to really read it and not, not with your Book of Mormon footnotes either. Yeah. <laughs> just. Well, I, I often talk about the bad news <clears throat> and the good news. Uh huh. And and I don't we don't usually get too much into the bad news here with all the stuff with polygamy and you know just some of the stuff the Book of Abraham and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's plenty of. But really, show that people, good people with good testimonies of the church, and Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, really can come to know Jesus and who He is. Absolutely. And that's the good news. That is the good news, isn't it? And I found it, and it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And don't you wish that people would be willing to do a little search on... Just listen. Yeah. Just, just listen for 30 seconds. Well, did you feel then that that time you ta had the talk, that was a born-again moment for you? Or have you had another one in since then, or one, <laughs> one or two since then or something? Or you... um, I think it was, it was pretty gradual, um, this realization that the day I was like, Mormonism isn't true, yeah. you know. It was it was pretty, pretty gradual. Once warming. you can step back a little bit, it does kind of answer a lot of the questions that we put on the shelf and stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, there there were questions that I didn't even realize were questions until I was like, oh, yeah, what about that? <laughs> yeah. And and then they'll say, oh, well, that'll get worked out in the eternities or whatever. Right. Well, in the Bible, it's, it's got the answer for you right there. Right. It doesn't need to be worked out. And it isn't eternities. something that some man put together to... Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, gosh, um, again, any, any last minute thoughts or anything? You kind of <laughs> got just a few seconds left, really, but... Yeah. I, I just wish people would give the Bible more credit for being yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. And just start there. The Bible can be trusted. It is accurate. It that is may, God's Word. Yeah, that may be the worst thing Joseph Smith did was to I put doubt so. in our mind that the Bible could be trusted. Yeah, I think because so. it's it's got the gospel of grace and, and tells the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So. Well, Amber, thanks for your time. You're welcome. I appreciate it, you're a sweet lady, and I, I hope family will listen to this and at least maybe take a little time to look and think about what you've said. Yeah. Okay. That would be good. Thanks a lot, Amber. Thanks. And we'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files. Mm -hmm.